Number 40, balance each of the following equations according to the half reaction method. And then we have letter E. So in this case, we have to balance hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2, and that's aqueous, plus permanganate ion, MnO4 minus, and that will yield manganese ion, which is Mn2 plus, and then oxygen, right, O2 gas. And we have to do this in a acidic solution. Okay, so I wrote down all of the steps that we're going to do when we have to balance a redox reaction in a acidic solution. So let's go. We've done tons of these already. So let's, let's give it a go, right? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to break this whole reaction into two half reactions. Pick the elements that go together. So for example, I have a manganese, right, an MN, in this compound, MnO4. So this compound has to hook up with the Mn2 plus on the other side, right? Because Mn, whoop, this side, right? Because Mn goes with Mn. They have to stick together. So I know that these two compounds are going to be my one half reaction. And then if I look at the other two, well, yeah, I have H2O2, right? So I have oxygen and hydrogen, and I have an oxygen on this side. Don't worry that there's no hydrogens on this compound because steps one, uh, three and four, you can always balance your oxygen and you can balance your hydrogen. So these two will go together. Okay, so now I have my two half reactions. Let's write them out. So we have H2O2, and that's aqueous, and that will yield O2 gas. And then we have the MnO4 minus aqueous yields uh, Mn2 plus, and that's aqueous. Okay, so step one's done. Now for step two, we only balance all of the elements except hydrogen and oxygen here. So we can't look at the hydrogen and oxygen. We can only look at all the other elements. There's only one that I see here, right? I see on the, on the bottom one, I have an MN, manganese, on the left, and I have a manganese on the right. I can't touch any of the hydrogen and the oxygen, so I don't even care about this reaction right now. And just know that when you're doing these steps, guys, do the steps for both uh, reactions at the same time. Just makes it easier. So let's see. I have one MN on the left side. I got one MN on the right side, so that's all balanced. So this step is already done for us. We checked it. It's already balanced. We move on to the next. The next step is to always balance oxygen. So just remember oxygen comes before hydrogen if we're doing these steps. So we balance oxygen by adding H2O. And here's a trick. If you want to balance or if you need to add one oxygen to either side, you're always going to add it in terms of H2O. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you need two oxygens, you'll add two H2Os, three oxygens, three H2Os. Now I'm going to go and look at the top equation because I have oxygens here. I have an oxygen on the left side and I have an oxygen on the right side. Let's see how many I have. Well, on the left side, I have two, right? And on the right side, I have two. So in this case, it's balanced. I don't have to balance the oxygen. That's already done for me. Now I'm going to work on the bottom. I see that I have an oxygen here, and how many? Well, I have four of them, right? How many oxygen do I have on the right side? I have none. So I need to balance, right? I need to have four. So if I need to add four oxygen, I'm going to add four H2O. So I'm gonna add four H2O on the product side. Okay, that step's done. Now the, third, the fourth step, right? We need to balance the hydrogen. And you balance the hydrogen by adding H+. Plus. So same type of rule applies. If you need to add one hydrogen, you're going to add it as one H+. Plus. Don't forget that positive charge there, right? We're adding um, hydronium ions or H+, plus protons. So now I'm going to work from the top, right? I see that I have a hydrogen on the left-hand side, right? And I have two of them, right? Two H's. So... I have no H's on my product side, so I need to balance them. If I have two H's on my reactant side, I need to add two hydrogens. So two hydrogens 
two H pluses. So that's what I'm going to add on my product side here, two H plus. Now we got to do the same thing for the bottom. I have no hydrogen on my left side, but on my product side, I have a hydrogen here. There's two of them. However, there's a four in front. So I have to multiply those two. There's a total of eight hydrogen here. There's no hydrogen here. So I need to get to eight. So I will add eight H plus. Okay, now the hydrogens are balanced. So that step's done. Now let's do the fifth step. We need to balance the charges. We balance the charges by adding electrons. Electrons are E negative. Electrons are negative. You're always going to add them to the more positive side of the two sides of the half reaction. So let's figure out that overall charge. What I like to do at this point is I like to make a barrier just so that I can see, you know, what's on my left side and what's on my right side. I'll start with the first equation first. You're only trying to find the overall charge. So only look in the upper right hand corners. But for H2O2 and O2, right, I don't see any numbers. You see how for H I have a plus? That's a charge, right? You see there's a charge down here for the negative and then there's a charge over here, right? But some of them don't have any numbers. If it doesn't have a number, it's neutral. That means that it's, it has a zero charge. It's not positive nor negative. So both H2O2 and O2 uh, will have zero charges. And then anything times zero is zero, right? So it doesn't matter that I had a number in front of here, right? Four times zero is zero. But in this case, I just had one. It's the only compound. So I have a overall charge of zero on the left-hand side. But now here on my product side, I have two different things. So I just have to make sure I add the total charge up. For O2, I know that that's a zero charge. But now for the hydrogen, I have a plus, right? And that means that it's a plus one charge, but there's two of them. So I have to multiply. The overall charge coming from here is a plus two. And now we just add these together, right? These compounds were added together. So I need to add the numbers together. So zero plus a positive two is a plus two. And that is the overall charge for the right-hand side. So now I just compare which side is more positive because I need to add electrons to the more positive side. Well, this side is more positive, right? So I know that I'm going to add electrons to the product side, but how many? Well, you want to get it down to the more negative side, right? And if I just bring this number over here, how many numbers on a number line is two from zero? Two, right? So that's how many electrons that you add. And now both of the charges are zero. We do the same thing for the bottom. Let's see, working from left to right, I see that I have a plus, that means it's a plus one charge, but I have eight of them. So eight times a plus one is an overall positive eight. And this is being added, so plus. We have MnO4, there's a minus, which means minus one. There's only one here, so the overall charge would be a negative one. And now we have to add the two together. 8 plus a negative 1, a.k.a. 8 minus 1, is a positive 7. Okay, now let's see what the overall charge of this one is. Well, we have a 2 plus here, right? And there's only one of them, so this would be a positive 2 plus. Now, here I don't see a charge, so neutral, it's 0. 0 times 4 is 0, so it doesn't really matter. And then plus two plus zero is a plus two. Which side is more positive? This side. So I know that I have to add electrons to my left side, my reactant side, but how many? Well, how many numbers difference is seven from two? Yeah, five numbers, right? Or seven minus two, if you think of it on a number line. So I have to add five electrons. And now this step is done. Now, before we balance the electrons, I'm just going to get rid of some of this work just to make it not as intimidating looking. The math was only to, to just add the electrons, but then after that, we don't need any of this work. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. There we go. 
Now for the next step. We have to balance those electrons. We have to make the electrons that we added the same number. And just know that this is a good checkpoint. The electrons that you added should be on opposite sides. This two electrons can't be on the same side as the other electron, okay? So if you had like something like this, right? Go back, something happened. They need to be on opposite sides, okay? So now what's the, 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 you know, what's the number that they both have in common by multiplying? And you want to have the smallest number possible, right? Well, between a 5 and a 2, the only number that they have close to each other is 10, right? I can times this whole equation by 5, and then 5 times 2 would be 10. And then the same thing goes for this side. If I take this whole equation and times it by 2, 2 times 5 will get me 10. But however, when you do this, you got to be fair. You have to change every single coefficient number. You got to be fair. So just take your time and you have to multiply 5 to every single coefficient. And then you got to do the same thing for the bottom. So let's give it a shot. For H2O2, I had one of them. But now 1 times 5 is now 5. So I have 5 H2O2s. For O2, I had 1. But then 1 times 5 is 5. I had 2 H pluses. But 2 times 5 is now 10. And then I had two electrons, two times five is 10. Okay, so that's the end for the first one. Now I can just erase this, I did this part. Now I gotta do the same for the bottom, but I'm gonna multiply everything by two instead of five. So that means all of these coefficients, right, they need to be changed. So let's do that. Five electrons times two, I now have 10 electrons, 8 H pluses, but now 8 times 2 is 16, so I have a 16 here. I had 1 MnO4 minus, but 1 times 2 is now 2, and maybe let me just pull this positive away, perfect. I had 1 Mn2 plus, but 1 times 2 is now 2, and I had 4 H2Os, but 4 times 2 is now 8. And now I can blow this two times away. I did the math. That's the end for the sixth step. Now comes the fun part. We had to get them the same because we want to cancel like substances out. All we're doing is simplifying. So we're looking on opposite sides of the equation, opposite sides of this little divider, to see if we could cancel anything out. Well, I had 10 electrons on the left side. I have 10 electrons on the right side. They're exactly the same. So bye-bye. They go bye-bye. They get canceled. We're simplifying. Let's see. Any other one that we can get rid of? Well, it looks like I have 10 H pluses on my left side. Uh, sorry, on my right side. And then I have 16 H pluses on the left side. That can get simplified. And we simplify this, since they're not the same number, by subtraction. If you get rid of the lower number, which is 10, right? That means that you would subtract 10 uh, H's from this side. How many would be left over? Yeah, 16 minus 10 is six. So I would say that instead of 16, I would just have six H pluses. Anything else that we can cancel? Meh, not that I see. Everything else is unique. So this step is done. So now all we have to do is just rewrite it as one equation. Everything on the left goes on the left. Everything on the right goes on the right. It doesn't matter what order you do. Just matters that all three of them got to be there. So maybe I'll just say we'll have 6H plus. Then maybe I'll go to the top. I'll say 5H2O2 aqueous plus 2MnO4 minus yields. Let's say 5O2 gas plus 2MN2 plus, and then plus 8H2O. And that is your final, final, final answer. Whew, this one was a doozy. Okay, 
So guys, hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you'd like. We're almost at, I think we're almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is unbelievable. I would never think that an education YouTube channel would, would get so many subscribers, but thank you guys so much. You guys rock. It's awesome. Um, yeah, let's keep learning. Learning is fun. Chem is fun. And if you need help with physics or math, we got that as well. Go check those videos out in our channel and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.